are in Kashmir at the foothills of the misty Himalayas and legend has it that this is where explorers started their search for the mythical abominable snowman. Luckily for us today we don't have to look very far because we have one with us. Yes of course I'm talking about Skoda's brand new Yeti. <laughs> The biggest change is to the nose, and while we miss the old car's quirky quad lamp arrangement, there's no doubt that this new, more mature face looks neat. The headlights are the biggest difference, and they now incorporate xenon projectors and LED daytime running lights. At the back, the changes are more subtle. The tail lamps have LEDs, the tailgate gets Skoda's dimpled look, and the bumper has been sculpted just a little bit. There are also new alloy wheels and you now have the option of a contrasting colour for the roof. Now, because this car is mechanically unchanged from the previous Yeti, what you get is the same engine and gearbox combos. What that means is a 2-litre TDI engine, which if you choose the 4x4 version produces 138 bhp, and if you choose the 4x2 version that I have now, it produces 109 bhp. But don't be put off, because this engine has been tuned in this state for a lot of good low-end grunt. However, the mid-range is as gutsy as ever and push it some more and you'll find that it is rather pleasing at the top end too. We were also hoping Skoda would use the facelift to introduce a petrol engine option or maybe an automatic gearbox, but alas, the Yeti remains a diesel manual only. Skoda has also said that it has worked on the clutch to make it lighter, more progressive and less prone to stalling. And yes, we can see the effect of that to some extent. What has also remained unchanged from the previous Yeti is the suspension. And we like that quite a lot. Yes, it is a bit on the stiff side and when you're traveling slowly, bumps tend to filter into the cabin and it does thunk through quite a bit. However, pick up the pace even slightly and it improves dramatically. It will smother just about anything you can throw at it as you go faster. Now, of course, the corollary of slightly stiffer suspension is better handling. And I'm not about to suggest that this is the best handling SUV of its kind. But for something this tall, this big and this heavy, it's not too bad. The steering is great and all in all, it's quite a lot of fun to chuck around corners. The other advantage, of course, is great highway stability. The insides are the same as we remember, with a few significant additions. The most obvious is the new three-spoke multifunction steering wheel that's found its way to all of Skoda's new models. There's also now keyless entry and go, a new touchscreen audio system with much needed Bluetooth, as well as electric adjustment for the driver's seat. So the Yeti facelift has retained pretty much everything we loved about the original albeit with a handsome new face. Yes, we would have liked to have seen a petrol engine option as well as the option of an automatic gearbox given this car's urban intentions. But as it stands, the package is still pretty solid. However, with all the added equipment with this car, the price is going to go up even higher. So is it still worth it? Well, if you're the sort of SUV buyer who prioritizes robust engineering, quality feel and a premium cabin experience, then yes, this is still the urban SUV 